With this tutorial I'm going to cover the basics of VTOL operation. I've included in the description beneath links to a kneeboard and how to install them to help you figure out the weights of your aircraft when in flight. I will also include a link to a mission to practice on. Before we take off you need to check your weight. The easiest way to do that when you're on the ground is left alt at to open the armament panel. Set up your weight. You can adjust your fuel and weapon load as you see fit. We started off at uh, about 80% fuel, which is just over 20,000 pounds. That is beneath 20,755 pounds, which is the limit for VTOL operation. So we are good to take off. When we come to the landing, however, you will need to figure out your own weight as and when you arrive. The uh, best way to figure that out is to take your total fuel and the weight of all your external stores the weight of your water and the weight of your airframe. I've created some knee boards to help with this. You press right shift K and then use the square brackets to cycle through the pages. I've included information such as the weight of the airframe itself, 4,000 pounds approximately, 500 pounds of water. We're not carrying any stores but you can see the approximate, approximate weights of all the stores here. The empty fuel tank, TGP etc. All you have to do is add up all these numbers together if it's more than £20,755, you need to either jettison some stores or you can jettison fuel. You can jettison fuel by pressing the fuel dump switches. These will dump fuel until you reach £2,800 or it reaches the bingo state. Whichever one happens first. When this happens, it will automatically disengage the switches for you. Generally speaking, when you get back from a mission, you can expect to be light enough to perform a VTOL landing unless you've brought ordnance back with you or you hit the tanker on the way home and have picked up a lot of fuel. So bear this in mind before you make your landing. Next I will go over our instruments. I will switch over to VSTOL master mode. We have our indicated airspeed, top left. Top right we have our altitude. I recommend switching this to radar mode. This will give you a true altitude above ground level, irrespective of barometer settings. Next we have the feet per minute ascent and descent rate, currently zero. It is also visually displayed with this marker here, it will climb up and down as you are ascending and descending. We have our nozzle position, currently at 5 degrees, our flaps position also currently at 5 degrees and our nozzle steering status in caster mode. In the middle we have our side slip indicator, this circle will shift to the left or the right as the aircraft is slipping. We have our engine temperature or jet pipe temperature currently at 390 degrees centigrade. Our RPM in percentage, we are currently at 29% RPM. Our ground speed indicator. This will not always match up with your indicated airspeed. This is because of headwinds or tailwinds. So bear this in mind. Above that we have our angle of attack indicator. You can also see visually on the HUD, we have this marker here, similar to how it will appear on the ascent and descent marker showing that we have got a nose up attitude. This will increase and decrease visually a lot to align with the angle of attack indicator and finally outside the cockpit if you look over the top we have a sensor. This is a weather vane it will tell you the direction of the wind. If I switch my nose while steering on and shimmy around a bit you'll see it move. This indicates the direction of airflow in front of the aircraft. It is best to take off into the wind. Do not attempt to take off with a heavy crosswind as it will result in the aircraft slipping quite badly and potentially tipping over. So always ensure to taxi yourself into, into the wind if possible or if not as close as possible to ensure the minimum amount of side slip while I'm taking off. To the right we have the H2O information. This includes the current remaining H2O, 500 pounds is your starting mount. We also have our flow indicator. This will light up green when water is being introduced into the engine. Additionally, we have the power margin indicator. If you have a look at the RPM gauge and the jet pipe temperature here, you will notice as I increase, it will change to the power margin indicator represented by a hexagon. You can see it is saying in R. This indicates that the RPM is our limiting factor. If it is temperature, it will show a J. And you can see as I increase the power, the hexagon fills up. If it goes beyond the top, you are stressing your engine significantly and it really needs to be reduced in power. This will, as I said, be a J if you are limited by jet temperature, and R if you are limited by RPM, whichever one is highest and closest to maxing out. 
If you see this indicator, be careful, do not increase it beyond the limit. Remember that doing so will strain your engine and can result in a failure, or even inability to hover later on in your mission. While we are here, I will visually show you the indicator for the, out the ascent and descent rate. You can see we're currently in a climb, and as I kill the throttle, you can see the marker falls down. This visually indicates your ascent and descent rate quite easily. Ideally, you want to have it neutral when performing vertical flight. So if you watch it climb back up, and there you go, now neutral. And so you can use that to easily maintain level flight without the need to read the number on the side. So we're ready to take off. We are already in VStore HUD mode. So I'll switch my H2O setting to take off. Flaps to short takeoff landing mode. Those were steering on. Make sure my stow stopper is all the way back. Now we're ready to take off. We need to check the wind. So we currently got a headwind. In fact, we actually have no wind, but essentially ensure that this is straightforward before taking off. If it does not, turn into the wind and then prepare to take off. I'm going to reduce my nozzle angle, sorry, increase my nozzle angle all the, all the way up to 82 degrees. You can see my flaps have gone down to 62 degrees as well. 82 degrees is so that the aircraft has the nozzles pointing directly downwards. The aircraft itself has its nose pointing upwards, so if you put your nozzles to say 90 degrees, you will in fact take off backwards, as you'll be pushed backwards across the ground. So, I will display my controls, and now I'm going to press down the brakes, and I'm going to slowly increase my throttle. Don't rush this, the goal is to do it as slowly as possible so you do not waste H2O unless it is necessary. 90%, 95, just gently increase, release the brakes as we come off the ground, keep it steady, don't worry about wobbling a little bit, just try and keep everything in control. A small wobble is fine, don't overcorrect. It's far better to wobble than it is to suddenly fling yourself to one direction because you're trying to correct for it. Let it settle down, let it climb up, keep the water in mind. If you use too much power, you will consume water. This may be required depending on your weight. Ideally you want to avoid it if possible, but as I said, keep it to the minimum. You only need to climb, you're not looking to fly like a helicopter. You merely look to get off the ground. So we've gotten to just about 200 feet off the ground. So I'm going to slowly decrease my nozzle angle and start gaining forward speed. I'm going to raise my landing gear to reduce drag. Keep your flight path indicator on the horizon. Try and keep your side slip to a minimum. If the side slip gets too strong, you will find yourself uncontrollably rolling over. So I've got a nozzle position now, I'll bring it down to 60 degrees and I'll pick up some forward speeds. I'm at 80 knots, 90 knots, 100 knots. Just let the airspeed pick up. Decrease my nozzle angle further. I'm currently putting a little bit of forward stick to keep the nose on the horizon. Keep on decreasing the nozzle angle. 160, 170, 180. Bring the nozzles forward. At this point we should raise our flaps to auto position. Caution because the, sh the aircraft will shift as the flaps come up. Now we can decrease our nozzle angle to zero and we are in forward flight. You do not need to hurry in any way when doing this. Take your time. Avoid big corrections. If your nose starts to drop uncontrollably, change increase the nozzle angle to bring back your nose. Try to avoid oscillations and take very ca great care in making small movements and not overcorrecting. The last thing you want is a pilot induced oscillation, which could result in you in the ground very quickly or forcing an ejection. Don't forget to switch off your water once you are in conventional flight. Bear in mind the limitations of the engine. You do not wish to push the engine very hard. Use as little throttle as possible. You never want to be in a fast climb because you will be straining the engine to do so. It's best that you keep the water usage to a minimum to conserve it for when you come into land. Consider your water, water usage more as an emergency tool than it is a necessity. You want to be using water only when you need to correct for something or otherwise can't hover. That means if you can hover without it, you should hover without it, but make sure it is ena enabled in the system and use minimum throttle to climb gently off the ground. So now we are on our approach. We can see the airbase just out there somewhere. There it is. I'm going to set V-Stall HUD mode. H2O2 landing. Flaps to stall. Anti-skid to nose wheel steering. Make sure the stow stop is not 
in place. I'm going to head toward the airbase and reduce my airspeed down to beneath 250 landing knots and then deploy gear. my landing gear. I'm just going to approach the airfield, line myself up and take my time. There's no sense rushing into this, it'll be very easy to mess up if you rush. And it's for your, especially when you're heavy, you should take yourself nice and slowly in. So I'm keeping an eye on my descent rate, keeping it gentle. Letting my speed degrade slowly. Hold about 1,000 feet. And in a moment, I'm going to raise my nozzle position up to about 50 degrees. When this happens, the nose will want to pitch up. In addition, the stow, the stow flaps will want to drop. When this happens, the aircraft will jolt slightly, so you need to be ready for that. So we're at 61 degrees nozzle. There are the flaps, you can see the aircraft lurch. So I'm going to stabilise myself again. And I maintain about 110 knots as I approach, keeping my nozzle at about 60 degrees. As you approach, you need to be mindful if your aircraft is too heavy or you do not have enough performance. You need to ensure that the performance margin indicator does not exceed two legs on the hexagon. At the moment I'm not using any. You'll need to, check, to make this check as you hit about 60 knots. So I'm going to bring my nozzles down to 82 degrees roughly and start slowing down to prepare myself to land. You need to keep a close eye on your power margin and keep an eye and make sure you're not using too much power as you approach. So now about 70 knots I need to check on my power usage. You can see I'm using 94% RPM. If this ever goes up, I need to keep an eye on it. Same goes for the jet temperature. You can see I'm now down to about 60 knots. If I'm using more than two legs of the power margin hexagon, as shown there, you should wave off and lose some weight and try again. Alternatively, you consider doing a short landing instead. Since we are within the power limits, I will carry on with my approach. I'm just going to take things very slowly. I'm going to start watching the slip indicator now that we're slow. You can see the slip indicator is drifting from left to right and I'm pitching my aircraft, keeping it steady, and I'm rolling to the left or the right to counteract the slip. The slower you go, the more responsive this will become. So keep a close eye on it as you get closer to the hover. So I'm going to maintain a very slow descent and simply approach the airbase. There are slips, so I rolled myself to the right to correct it. And pitch forward to give ourselves a little bit more airspeed. And we'll allow the aircraft to start to descend now. And a pitch up to slow the aircraft down. Remember, do things slowly, do not rush yourself. This is especially important if you are heavy. The heavier you are, the less your aircraft can respond to a mistake. For example, if you start descending too quickly, it will take you longer to recover from the descent. So I'm now watching the slide slip indicator. You see I've slipped off, so I'm going to gently roll myself across, try and keep it centred. The airspeed is continuing to drop and down down to 30 knots. I'm over the airbase. I've got a slow descent rate. I'm just going to maintain this and let myself drop down to the airfield nice and gently. The 
The slower you get, the more mind you need to pay to the slip indicator. It is important that you land with as little or no slip, otherwise you will find your aircraft careening to the left or the right when you touch down. This could even result in your aircraft tipping over, so be very careful. So we're doing about 22 knots now. We've more or less stopped above the airbase. I let myself drop slowly. Keep a close eye on your descent rate, you do not want to allow it to get too fast. The slower you do things, the easier it is to recover from a mistake. If you try and make big movements, there is a very good chance you could descend or tip or turn too fast and not be able to recover before it becomes a critical situation. Once you start descending, try and maintain a continuous descent. The last thing you want is to end up hovering again, or oscillating up and down as you go. This can mess you up, it will also upset your, upset your balance as you land. So we've got a little bit of side slip, 5 knots. Just let my aircraft drop. Keep on rolling the aircraft gently to centre up the side slip indicator. Tip the nose downwards a bit and then touch down. Remember that since we were using the engine to brake by tipping ourselves backwards, I have to tip the nose forwards back to level just before touchdown to ensure that I land with all wheels flat. If you fail to do so, you risk hitting a tail strike or you'll land with your rear wheels first and then you'll bash your nose down as you come down. So be very careful with that. 